Hello everybody. Do we continue with the sessions now? All right. You can look at the screen in front of you and just look at what are the traits and what are the skills that a leader requires. Traits. A leader needs to be adaptable to situations. He needs to be the same in different situations. A leader needs to be alert, very alert to social environment. A leader needs to be ambitious and achieve, achievement oriented. A leader needs to be assertive. We spoke about assertive earlier. Polite and firm. A leader also needs to be cooperative. Only when he's cooperative will his team members cooperate with him. A leader needs to be able to make decisions fast, on the spot. A leader should be somebody very dependable. The team members should be able to go talk to him, ask him for help, etc., etc. A team, a team leader also needs to be slightly dominant but not aggressive. He should have the capacity to influence others in his team. Now let's look at the skills that a team leader needs. The team leader needs to be clever, no doubt. You cannot have a leader who's dumb. He should be intelligent. He should be conceptually skilled at whatever he's doing. He needs to possess all the skills required to be a good leader. He should be creative. He should be able to come up with new ideas, new ways. He should be very diplomatic and tactful. He should never be nasty. He should never shout at his team members. He needs to remember everybody's got the self-respect. So when he deals with his team members or anybody else, he needs to be very diplomatic and not hurt anybody. A team leader should be fluent in speaking. He should be a good communicator. He should be knowledgeable. He should be somebody who's organized. Somebody who's very meticulous. He cannot be somebody who's throwing things around, not bothered about how his cabin looks. Because a team leader always leads by example. So his team members start following what he does. A team leader should be very persuasive. He should be able to persuade somebody who says no and bring that person to an extent where he says yes. He should be socially skilled. Somebody who can move around, talk to people, somebody who's very approachable, somebody who's very friendly. Now let's look at a few other traits. His level of energy should be high. Not somebody who's always dull, always wants to rest. He should be very persistent. If he wants something, he should make sure that he gets that thing done. So very persistent. He should be very confident. He should be tolerant of stress and not break up when he's too tensed or there's so too much of pressure. He should be somebody who's always calm and cool, irrespective of whether they're stressed or not. He should be willing to assume responsibility and take ownership. He cannot go away and say, no, this is not my work, I can't do it. He should always take ownership and assume responsibility. The skills that the leaders use are integrity, they should be ethical, they should have morals and principles, they should be honest. Honest to themselves, honest to the company and honest to their colleagues or their team. They should have compassion. A team leader is supposed to be somebody who's got a lot of compassion. They should have feelings, emotions. They should show 
empathy. What is empathy? Putting yourself in the shoes of another person and trying to experience how that other person feels. That's empathy. A tree, a team leader or any leader should be humble. He should not be very proud. He should be humble, irrespective of what status he is in, irrespective of which position he is on the hierarchy. Unnecessary pride and arrogance never gets a person climbing the ladder. The responsibilities of a team leader are he's the guide. He coordinates with the team members. He provides structure for the team. He clarifies the rules. He clarifies the responsibilities. He is responsible for allocating tasks. He sets the objectives or the goal. Here, my friend, all of you, what do you think is the difference between desire and goal? We have somebody who says goals are achievable but desires may or may not be achievable. You're right. Sayed, desire is what you need. Rohit, that's right. Goal is what needs to be achieved. Cool. Fatima, desire can be more than a goal. Goal is what you achieve, desire is wish, which helps only self. A goal is something that might help others as well. Cool. All of you are on the right track. Okay. A desire is something that you would just Sit back when you're free, you know, throughout the day, five minutes, ten minutes. You just sit and you do wistful thinking, meaning you just sit and think that, oh God, I need this, I need that, I need that. A desire doesn't cost anything at all. You just sit and desire. Today I'm driving a Tata Nano. Next week I want to drive an Audi. Is that something which is practical? No, it's not. How can you, if you're driving a Nano today, within a week, there are very few chances that you can drive an Audi. So that's a desire. It doesn't cost you money. It just comes into your mind. It gives you some sort of a satisfaction. Hari Prasad says, take a rented, rental one, an Audi. No hurry. I want my own. And one day I'll have it. Thanks anyway. Okay. Uh, let's move on. We were talking about desire. Desire just come into our mind. We can desire anything. It doesn't cost anything. It just gives us some sort of satisfaction. On the other hand, a goal is an ambition. A goal is an ambition that we have, a target that we set for ourselves within a stipulated time. It's absolutely mandatory that you give yourself a duration to achieve your goal. Goals can be short-term goals. Goals can be long-term goals. Short-term would be a week, short-term could be a month, it could be up to a year. Long-term can be up to five years. So this is how we set goals and the leader also sets goals for us. Team. Organizational goals. The leader clarifies working methods. He focuses on performance. He is not bothered about the personal side of you. He only looks at your performance. When have you experienced an issue as a leader that you did not have the authority to resolve? Can anybody tell me that? How did you know that you did not have the authority? Who did you refer to for help? Use examples from your current experience, work, society, whatever. Okay, have any of you got such uh, experiences where you were the leader but you didn't have the authority that a leader normally deserves? A team leader. A team leader's authority will vary from role to role depending on what he actually does, depending on the organizational structure. A team leader may refer to line management or other authorities for the following. 
Now let's say there's an HR. What is the job of HR? Human resources. They recruit staff, they train, they judge a performance, they look at, you know, they're in charge of the discipline, racism, bullying, everything. Policy and procedures, budget and resources, organizational objective, managing change, line management. So each and every department has got its leaders. It's not necessary that all the leaders do the same type of work. It depends on which department they are in. So their roles and responsibilities change. So when their roles and responsibilities change and they are doing a different type of work from the other leader, it's obvious that they will expect that their team members also have different roles and responsibilities. Reflect and identify the skills that you need to lead. Reflect and identify what are the gaps, where you need to fill up the gaps. Never bring your ego into it. If somebody is giving you feedback, never become personal about it. The leaders will not give you feedback because they don't like you. No. The leaders will give you feedback because they want you to grow. They want you to improve and do an amazing job. Feedback should never be taken personally. The day we become sentimental, emotional, and take it to heart, it will be very difficult for us to grow. How will you know if somebody doesn't point out that in a particular area you're not up to the mark? How will you know? Unless somebody tells you. So the moment the leader tells you, if you are smart, if you're wise, you will start acting immediately and improving that area. Instead of getting upset, crying, arguing, fighting, take feedback very, very positively. Find a mentor. They could be somebody who's senior to you. They could be somebody who's in the management role. But find a mentor who can always give you positive advice, who can always motivate you. Attend further leadership and management training. Whenever you get an opportunity to enter uh, to attend leadership or management training, please do it. Access yourself as a leader. Look at yourself and be very honest to yourself. Make an assessment of yourself as a leader. What are the qualities in you that fit in perfectly as a leader? And what are the areas that you need to work on and become better? Guys, there's nothing or nothing is impossible. There's no weak point of yours which cannot be improved. Once you know your weak areas, work on it. Conduct a SWOT analysis. Identify your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, threats. Develop an action plan to improve as a leader. What are the things that you're going to do? How are you going to fill in the gap where there's a weakness? How are you going to sustain your strong points? Add the, apply the SMART target to your actions. Normally, whenever we think of a goal, or we decide on a goal, we need to use the SMART method. SMART is being specific. The S stands for specific. You need to know exactly what you want. Make it very specific. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to be. Second is M. M stands for measurable. You know where you are today. You have set a goal that within the next two years, I'm going to be this. So from today up to 2016, is measurable. You've given yourself two years. The third, which is, the third is achievable. A, achievable. Something 
that you've thought that you going to achieve and you can achieve it. Not something which is impossible. Something which you can achieve. R is realistic. Give yourself a goal which is realistic. Not something which is totally impossible. If today I say, next year I'm going to be the CM of Tamil Nadu. It's not realistic. So give yourself something which is realistic, which you can you know, actually put in your efforts, put in a lot of time and you can achieve it. Time bound. Every goal is supposed to have a duration. You can never say that I'm going to achieve this sometime in the future. It's not specific at all. So whenever you think of climbing up, whenever you think of a goal, give yourself duration. Okay, my dear friends. This is the last slide. This shows you how you can slowly and steadily climb the corporate ladder and become a leader. It's not impossible. Maybe difficult, but not impossible. Identify the weaknesses that you have. Work towards them. Nothing is impossible. I wish you all the very, very best in life. I hope that you like the session.